Hello and welcome to this presentation on integrating major data with simulations for automated model calibration. My name is Sripad Chandrachud and I'm an applications engineer with the MathWorks based in Natick, Massachusetts. I would also like to introduce my colleague Graham Dajion, who is the energy production industry manager here at the MathWorks and has led the effort on integrating synchrophaser data with simulations, which is at the core of this presentation. We would like to begin by looking at the motivation behind this presentation, which is to ensure the reliability of power system. In every electric grid, irrespective of its location or the region, planning and operational decisions are made based on system studies that use dynamic models. For both short-term and long-term planning, transmission planners routinely perform computer simulations to determine any operational limits on the power systems and to see if any reinforcements are required. So naturally, if the models used for these studies are not accurate, meaning if they don't reflect correctly the structure and the parameters of the equipment in the field, then the analysis could lead to a false outcome. With that in mind, we are going to focus on modeling and simulation of the generation equipment and really take advantage of the synchrophaser measurements to support this model calibration. We would especially look at integrating a measured response from the field with a dynamic simulation. And finally, we will look at an example of automated parameter estimation for estimating parameters of a doubly fed induction generator wind turbine. So let's begin with the generation equipment modeling. Whether we are thinking about the conventional power systems where we have a synchronous generator being driven by a steam turbine or a hydraulic turbine or whether we are looking at the renewable systems where we have various kinds of wind turbine. The challenge behind modeling this generation equipment is to really come up with a good dynamic model that represents the actual equipment in the field. Now, when the equipment is first commissioned, manufacturers do provide you with a set of parameters, but these parameters are rarely validated against field experiments, as well as when these equipments are used over a long periods of time, their parameters do change because of rewindings or even retuning of the controllers. So it is necessary, it is necessary to periodically revalidate the models and to make sure they match with the actual equipment in the field. Now, there are two kinds of tests that you can be doing on these equipments. They are known as the offline test and the online test. In case of offline tests, you would typically perform voltage step tests on these generator units and then try to estimate their parameters and build computer simulation models using that data. Okay. Now, as compared to that, in case of online tests, you could be looking at uh, the real disturbance data that is being measured in the field using digital fault recorders or we could be looking at the synchrophaser data which is being gathered from the phaser measurement units, right? Now, there are cases where online disturbances could help you reveal the parameters of the equipment that wouldn't necessarily be obtained from the offline test. So let's move on to the heart of this presentation which is the synchrophaser measurements and their benefits in performing model calibration. These synchrophasers or phaser measurement units, these are the measurement devices that are located on various parts in the electric grid and they provide you with phaser measurements. That's the magnitude and the angle and even the frequency of electrical conditions on the network. So you can get magnitude and phase angle of voltages or magnitude and phase angle of currents at various different parts in the electrical network. And the reason that makes these measurements incredibly useful is that they're GPS time stamped. So no matter where in the electric grid you are making these measurements, you can look at them at a common time reference. Okay. So the first benefit is they provide highly accurate measurements. The second thing is 
because this system is operational and these measurements are being taken onto that operational systems as the disturbances are happening as the faults are being recorded you're getting highly useful information for performing model verification and they enable model verification of an online phenomena that may not be captured with an offline field testing to give you a classical example a subsynchronous resonance is a phenomenon that happens when there is an interaction of the electrical resonance with the mechanical resonance now that simply cannot be captured during an offline testing so the parameters of uh, the turbine such as the damping or the stiffness of its shaft those parameters cannot be validated by these offline tests so so capturing such a disturbance using phaser measurement units is highly valuable in the model verification process and the last thing is synchrophasers can actually allow you to reduce model complexity by replacing components like parts of the grid with data driven component we'll get back to this with more detailed example to show you how actually you can reduce the model complexity now let's look at how to bring in that measured response from the field into a simulation and that's really the strength of matlab and simulink that not only can you perform the mathematical modeling and simulation but you can also perform data driven simulation where you can bring in major data into a simulation and see its impact on the overall operation of that model okay now in this case what we are going to do is bring in the measured phaser data from the field which is the one highlighted here on the right hand side into a simulation as an enforced dynamic response as i said before the phaser measurement unit data or the pmu data that gives you magnitude and angle of both the voltage and the current so what we are going to do here is bring in one of those two quantities voltage or current into the simulation as this enforced dynamic response and then measure the response of the simulation for the other quantity which would be current in this case now let's try to understand this in the context of an example so here we have a double fed induction generator wind turbine that is connected to a series compensated transmission line and we have installed a phaser measurement unit or synchrophaser right at the point of connection of the wind turbine and the electric grid okay so to go through this example and to see how the measured data is brought into simulation let's actually move to the software environment itself and see matlab and simulink in action so here we have the complete model of that wind turbines connection with the electric grid and this has been implemented using simulink and sim power systems okay as you would notice this model has various components such as the wind turbine which is connected to this phaser measurement unit location with the help of transformers okay at the appropriate voltage level all the electrical components that you see in this model they have been brought directly from the sim power systems library so this wind turbine transformers or even transmission lines and other components that you would imagine being part of an electrical grid they are all available to you ready made in sim power systems library to give you just a quick overview of that here is the elements library where you will find Uh, the basic components such as resistor inductor capacitor as well as advanced components such as pi transmission line distributed parameters line as well as different kinds of transformer models okay and it's a block diagram environment so you can very simply start a blank model and then drag and drop these blocks or components from the library and then hook them up together to form your representation of the electrical network and that's exactly what we have done in this model that we were looking at so what you have here is a wind turbine that is connected to the grid point of connection at this bus b2 here with the help of transformers transforming the voltage at the appropriate grid voltage level okay and the next thing that we are doing in this particular example is we are bringing in the measured phaser data right here as an enforced dynamic response so now we have both the dynamic model 
with the help of these components and we are integrating that with the help of this measured data that is brought in from a synchrophaser or phaser measurement unit. If we dive down inside this block, what you will see are the three controlled voltage sources for, for phase A, phase B and phase C. So what we are doing is the major data, that voltage data, which is in the phaser form, we are bringing that along with the frequency data. So here you see it's, it's the magnitude of the voltage and then multiplied with sine of omega t. So that's what we are enforcing through with the help of these controlled voltage sources. Now, if we come back to the top level of the model, we can execute this full dynamic simulation with the help of this run button at the top. Okay, And once this simulation execution is completed, we can observe various responses in this model, such as the current and voltage response or even other quantities that are outputs of this wind turbine model. Okay, So on this top side, uh, what you are observing are called as the scope blocks or the measurement blocks that you can drag and drop from the Simulink library. And over there, based on where those scope blocks are connected, we can measure various quantities. So in this case, we are observing the current response at the point of connection, as well as at the bottom, we are observing the torque response from this wind turbine model. Okay. Now, because this simulation is depicting a subsynchronous resonance phenomena, it's very typical that you would see torque amplification in such an event. So in this case, you are seeing looking at two responses, the magenta over here, that's the actual torque amplification that was observed in the field during the subsynchronous resonance event. And the yellow plot that you are seeing superimposed on that one, that's really the output of the simulation at this point. Now you can see those two are way away from each other, which is indicative of the fact that the parameters of our wind turbine model in this simulation are not accurate or they are not reflecting the real wind turbine that's out there in the field. So how do we go about ensuring that the parameters of our model match that of the actual equipment in the field? That whole process is termed as the parameter est estimation process and we're going to see in the rest of this presentation how you can take advantage of MATLAB Simulink environment to automatically identify those parameters. Okay, and to take a look at which parameters we are going to identify for this wind turbine model, if we drill down into the uh, into the model, what you would see is we have various parameters. We have first of all the electrical parameters of the wind turbine generator, so such as the power of the wind turbine or the voltage at which it is op operating or the frequency of those wind turbine. They're all labeled over here. Just like those electrical parameters, we also have parameters for the drive train or the shaft, the mechanical shaft of the wind turbine. And the parameters that we do not have accurate information on are the inertia, a spring constant, and the damping of the shaft. So these three parameters, and that's why they're labeled with the help of variables, H, K, and D, and we are interested in identifying their real values that match with the actual wind turbine in the field. So to identify these parameters, we are going to use the response optimization tool which is part of the Simulink Design Optimization Toolbox. And to make this optimization process of estimating parameters faster, we are going to do one additional step on this model. So what we are going to do is convert this model, all these electrical components that you see, into corresponding C code so that its execution will be faster. Okay, and how do we go about doing that? Well, what we can do is select all this electrical portion of the model right here and then put that into what we call as a subsystem and then generate C code for it with the click of a button. So let me show you how we do that. So we've selected all the electrical blocks over here and we're going to simply right click on that selection and say create subsystem from this selection. Okay. And once this subsystem is formed, we can name it appropriately. So in this case, we are going to label it as wind turbine model with PMU data, okay? And then we can also label these three outputs, which are uh, the current output that we are observing at the wind turbine, 
this is the simulated torque so as you can see this torque is coming as an output from the wind turbine and then we are taking advantage of the automatic routing blocks called as from and go to blocks in simulating to bring this simulated torque at the output over here and we are comparing that with the measured torque so the real measurement that was done in the field during the subsynchronous resonance event so we will we will label these outputs accordingly okay and once that is done we are going to simply generate C code from this by right clicking on the subsystem, going to the C, C++ code option and saying generate S function. As we are following that process, you would say it automatically brings up this user interface where it asks us which parameters do we want to pick as the global tunable parameters and the idea behind that is the tunable parameters are something that you can change during the simulation run so as the optimization algorithms are going to exercise this simulation with different sets of parameters we want these parameters to be identified as tunable so in this case we are choosing two of the parameters which are the damping d and then the stiffness k of the shaft of the wind turbine Okay, so we select those and then we simply click this build button and it would give us the corresponding S function which is nothing but a C code representation of the electrical diagram that we had where we had the wind turbine connected to the transformer to the grid point of interconnection. And again to stress the point, the idea behind this step is to simply speed up the estimation process we could have very well run the estimation process on the main electrical model itself but it would take a few more minutes to complete the optimization process so we are simply trying to speed that up okay so now that we have this corresponding s function generated for us we are going to drag that block onto our model and we will replace this original subsystem with the help of this s function okay so we have that we can again press the play button and make sure that we are getting the same response and then we will proceed with the response optimization process to identify our parameters. Okay, so we ran the model and now we can ensure that these are the same responses that we were getting before and now we want to follow the process of response optimization. Okay, so we go on to this analysis tab on to the top menu bar and from there we will choose the response optimization tab okay and you can over here again see those plots that we had selected the torque reference and the current reference here on the right hand side those same plots are available over here and what we can do is we can we can select the parameters using this design variable set something that we are going to optimize Okay, so with the help of that tab, I'm going to select that same D and K parameters of the wind turbine. And we can also set minimum and maximum bounds for these parameters. Uh, by default, they are left at minus infinity and plus infinity. But the idea here is to use your experience or some logical bounds on these parameters so that the optimization algorithm would look for a solution within those logical bounds even if you leave them unbounded at minus infinity and plus infinity the optimization algorithm can still run and find you a solution but we have to think about it from a mathematical standpoint that there could be multiple solutions that can fit the solution of this optimization problem so giving logical bounds is only going to help us get the right set of parameters okay and once that is done what we can do is go to this options tab and select the optimization algorithm there are various well-known algorithms that you can choose from here we are going to look at the gradient descent method with the sequential quadratic programming algorithm okay and after the selection is done, we can bring up simultaneously this uh, comparison of measurement and simulated response the scope block over here. And on the other side, we are going to press this optimize button to begin the optimization process. 
Okay, so you get this uh, window which says that the optimization is running. And what we will see in just a minute is with every run of the simulation by this optimization algorithms, we'll see a new plot popping up over here. And then eventually those two plots would superimpose, which would be indicative of the fact that we have obtained a set of parameters that matches the actual wind turbine in the field. So on the right hand side, you are able to see a pane where you can monitor the iteration of this optimization algorithm as well as the error or which is also called as the uh, function value. And that error is nothing but the but difference between these two plots, the measured and simulated response. And what you would notice over time is that function value or the error is going to reduce or go close to zero which is again a mathematical indication that the two plots are superimposed on each other. So I'm going to let this run for a minute and then once it is complete, we will go back and look at the identified parameters. You can already see that plot the simulation output yellow plot it has already catched on the frequency of this waveform and then the optimization algorithm would play with the magnitude over here and the plots would eventually give you a very good correlation between them. And as it is going on, uh, you can imagine how difficult this process would be if you have models where you are estimating uh, of the order of 10 or so parameters, which is very typical in case of synchronous generators or excitation system. If you think about doing something like this manually, this would be extremely laborious. But here you can see how elegantly the tool is performing this process and would eventually offer us the right set of parameters. We can actually see the model underneath being exercised with a different set of parameters. You see the model blinking and then in the other pane we can see that the function value is decreasing. It has come down to 52 so it's going to go closer and closer to zero and then we will see the superimposition of these two responses or a very good match or correlation between them. Alright so it looks like we have obtained uh, a very good good match already. We'll see the optimization algorithm finish in just a second over here. So here we go. We can see that the optimization algorithm uh, is complete. It does say the optimization has converged. We can also see a very good correlation between the measured and simulated response. We can also double check that by going back to the model then running this model and then observing the response right here in this scope block at the bottom of the model. Okay, so there you have it. So we can zoom on to these responses and see how well a match between measured and simulated response we have obtained. And the two parameters that we estimated were uh, D and K, which were damping and stiffness of the wind turbine shaft and we can actually see their values. So here you have it. These are, these are the new values of D and K, which we can now put back into our dynamic model. And we have a very good model of the wind turbine that reflects our actual wind turbine in the field. One other cool feature of MATLAB that I really like is all these process that you just saw where, wherein we set which parameters we wanted to optimize, which optimization algorithm to choose, etc. Well, all this can be automated simply by going to this optimizing tab and selecting this generate MATLAB code option. Okay, 
when I click on that, MATLAB has captured all the things that we had done in this project and given me a ready-made script uh, that is equivalent of all those steps that we had manually performed. And you can see this function over here, this SDO, which stands for Simulink Design Optimization with the name of my model. Well, we can save this function with the help of this tab here, okay? We will save this to our current directory and then simply if at a later time, if you wanted to share this with your colleagues or other team members, you can give them this function and they can run and obtain this similar set of optimization process. They can see for themselves how this process is working. So it is, so this makes it very easy to share what you have done and then to reuse this without having to follow all the steps that we just saw. All right, now having seen the advantage of synchrophaser measurements in obtaining the parameters of the wind turbine that cannot be obtained through usual offline field tests, let's see other advantages of uh, the synchrophaser data. One of which is to reduce the model complexity and that relates to the location of the synchrophaser or PMUs on the electrical grid. So what you are observing in this diagram here is down below here we have our wind turbine with the point of connection and then here we have the rest of the grid. Okay. In case of this model, we cannot reduce this model because there is no PMU installed at this location. But if we had one at that point, what we can do is collect the voltage responses at each of that location and bring those in as an enforced dynamic response into the simulation. So you don't have to simulate all the components in the electrical grid. You can just capture the PMU data and then bring that into a simulation and help it to identify parameters of your wind turbine. And why is this reducing model complexity important? Because you just saw that the optimization algorithm exercises your Simulink model or SimPower Systems model hundreds of times, if not thousands of times to identify those parameters. So less complex the model, faster would be the process of optimization and estimating your parameters. Now, ideally, if we can have one PMU right at the point of connection, that would be the most valuable location of that PMU because we just need one enforced dynamic response to integrate with the simulation and identify parameters of the wind turbine. But even if you don't have the PMU right at the point of connection, we can estimate the PQV profile or the active reactive power and the voltage information at the point of connection given the profile at all these different PMU location. And how do we do that? Well, we do that using the load flow technique. So let me show you an example of that, how exactly it is done. The load flow is basically an optimization problem where quantities at certain buses are known and then others need to be identified. So the locations where PMUs are present, given that we know voltage and current profile, we can calculate the active and reactive power at those locations. So that's why they are labeled as PQ buses in the load flow optimization problem. And the point of connection where we want to identify the PQV profile, that will be labeled as swing bus. So based on how this load flow is solved, we will know the PQV profile at this point of connection. And then we can use that information or we can use that as an enforced dynamic response into our simulation model and repeat the process that we just saw in last few minutes. So let's go back to the MATLAB environment and actually see an example of a load flow problem for such an electrical network and how we can automate that process as well. Okay, so here we have a very similar setup of a detailed electrical network and you can see these are the three PMU locations or the three PQ buses that we had on the PowerPoint slide. And this is our point of connection. And we are trying to estimate the PQV profile at that location. So what we have done 
is written a MATLAB script which can automate this whole load flow process. So the steps that uh, we have taken, I'll quickly walk you through those. So first thing is we are loading the PMU data that is captured at all those three different locations. And then we are using, we are taking advantage of the parallel computing tool in MATLAB environment to, to run this par for loop which is basically a for loop which is parallelized onto number of cores of your computer to accelerate this optimization or to accelerate this load flow problem to accelerate the solution of this load flow problem okay okay so at the heart of this is this load flow command which is available to you within sim power system so at every time step of for the duration that which this disturbance has been captured we are going to solve this load flow and then generate a pqv profile at the point of connection so let me run this script and we will observe uh, the plots uh, which are those pqv profiles and that's basically how we will reduce the model complexity and we have actually captured the generated pqv profile so let me show you that right here on the powerpoint slide so this is th this uppermost plot that you're looking at here that actually shows uh, the green and the blue responses uh, and you can see they are very well superimposed on each other and what what that is showing is the estimated pqv profile at a location versus the actual profile and the plot on the lower portion of the powerpoint slide that shows the error between the measured and calculated voltage at the point of connection and you can see that they have a very good accuracy outside the fault region and that's uh, really the outside the fault region is the region that we are interested in and then we are going to use that value so what's the next step after we have obtained this pqv profile well we take that pqv profile and use it as an enforced dynamic response into the simulation model And so once those PQV conditions at the point of connection have been determined, we can use them as an enforced dynamic response on the model, and then we can carry out the parameter estimation task as we saw in the previous part of the presentation. So just to recap that part, well, here are the two plots side by side. So before MATLAB estimation, you can see how far the plots were from each other. And then after the parameter estimation task was run, uh, the responses were optimized and you can see a very good correlation between the measured and simulated response so this is an automated process that can help you identify the parameters of your dynamic models or the field equipment such as wind turbine or synchronous generator or excitation systems or even governors so if you want to learn what are the other areas on the generation transmission or distribution side wherein you can apply this optimization technique you can explore our energy production website on mathworks.com and you will find a detailed listing of those applications also at the beginning i had referred to the offline tests that you can also be using to estimate parameters of your field equipment we have done a recording of that in the form of a webinar which is titled addressing regulatory modeling standards for automated parameter estimation of these generation equipment models so feel free to explore uh, that recording as well on our website and in summary i would like to emphasize on the key points uh, that we saw in this presentation which is the synchrophaser locations that allow model reduction are of the highest value for these model verification tasks. Secondly, an enforced dynamic response that is a direct synchrophaser measurement, like the one we saw at the point of connection, that would be ideal. But if you don't have those ideal PMU locations, you can construct a PQV profile and then bring that as an enforced dynamic response in your simulation. And finally, the automated parameter estimation task that we saw that can help you significantly reduce the workload that is associated with matching the simulation models with actual field equipment. So I hope you can take advantage of these optimization algorithms and automated parameter estimation technique for identifying 
parameters of your generation equipment, whether it's from offline tests or online disturbance data that is collected using synchro phasers or phaser measurement units. Thank you.